What's going on, y'all? What up? What up? What up, Jordan? Nice to meet you, baby. Nice to meet you, finally, man. How's it going, man, brother? Mr. Raul, Godfather. What's going on, fam? I can hear you. Are you able to? Oh, there you go. You can't hear me. Okay, my bad, man. Hey, yeah, now so I can. Hey, I want. I want to welcome everybody on uh, that's tuning in with us. Uh, this is more of a tester. I told you guys I'm going to play around with the time a little bit just to see if I'm able to get a better connection. And based on what this is saying, it's saying that my connections are a little bit better. This is more of a tester. I told you guys I'm going to play around with the time a little bit. So today we have Danny Devontae with us, and we also have uh, Jordan Moulton from Moulton's Bully Empire. Uh, today, I actually visited him and hung out with him for a little bit in his yard. And today, we're pretty much going to be breaking down pastors. We're going to be talking about pastors, and we're going to go into in depth as to, you know, what are the flaws and how we're able to identify them and also able to fix them. Uh, before I continue, those of you that are tuning in, let me know if you're able to hear us loud and clear and if you're able to see us as well. So let me know if you're able to hear me, Danny. Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. You can hear you. You can hear me. All right. Excellent, man. So uh, let's get started here, man. I know my connection is not the best. I was literally half hour ago. It was a lot better than what it is right now. But uh, Danny, let me ask you something, man. Uh, what's one of the first things that you notice uh, whenever you see a dog that has some sort of pastern issues, man? I mean, well, yeah, that's the, the first thing I probably actually look like Jordan said in his last life. Once you start getting educated with what's going on with the dogs, that's exactly what you look for, the high rear, the, the weak pastors. <clears throat> um, you know, easty, westies, you know, all that stuff. But um, I've had a, a few of the puppies that they start off like that or, you know, I bought one like that and then I just started trying to make adjustments like raising the bowl. To, okay. to strengthen up his his pastors. Um, after seeing your video, I saw the one about the um, the rocks. You know, making a little little um, area for when them sure. with the with the rocks for them to be on their toes and strengthen their their pastors up. You know, so it's a learning progress. You know, there's always things that you could you know feed them to help them build stronger bones and muscles and muscles. You know. But when they're puppies, you don't really want to feed them. You know, you don't want to feed them nothing just other than regular food and just try to get it correct. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. Let me just answer this question real quick. Uh, Ray Garcia is writing, hey, Raul, do you have Ethernet cable connection to your <laughs> internet modem? The answer is no. I live, <laughs> in the middle of this. <laughs> I live in the sticks. I just ordered today an actual tower, man. And uh, like I said, I switched my accounts to business accounts. Hopefully, uh, we can improve the connection. Now, let me ask Jordan. Jordan, normally, uh, what do you notice uh, when you first see some sort of issue as far as pastors? What, what are you normally looking for? Uh, well, typically, it, it's, it's usually the foot looks like it's almost flat on the ground. Not up on its tippy toes. It looks like it's, you know. Like it's a drop foot almost, you would say. Um, and uh, you can notice it a lot of times as a puppy. Sometimes it happens as the dogs get older, I've noticed. Um, I've heard, you know, food can affect it, like people trying to too much protein too fast. Um, I actually feed my dogs a blend of Victor, a puppy, and I also mix it with a wholesome large breed formula um, just to kind of, you know, slow that growth rate down a bit but uh yeah okay all right so basically you, you start feeding them uh large large adult food in order to give them less uh dense dense content um calories uh therefore you know they, they could pretty much make the adjustment now Let's 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 let me ask a question. Would we agree that the pastor of the dog is somewhat the equivalent to say our wrist? Will we rec will we uh, recognize yeah. that as maybe being our wrist? Okay. So basically, when our dogs get burly up front and they get these big shoulders and big chests and whatnot, they're actually adding a lot more weight in their front. And therefore, that's what's making those risks come down. There's one of the reasons why I've repeatedly told people 
Uh, do not overfeed your pup, especially when they're young, because their long bone grows a lot faster than the actual uh, ligaments and tendons and whatnot. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why you want to keep, um, you know, your puppies light until they at least reach uh, a good eight, nine, 10 months of age. You still want to keep them light all the way through 16 months. And that's when their bones actually seal, their bone plates actually seal. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I would. Okay. All of a sudden I lost... I lost the echo. Could you hear me, Danny? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I agree with you. I'm, I'm getting an echo from you, Danny, for some reason. Just, just a heads up. Are you? You could adjust. Yeah. Uh, you just, you just left the audio for a minute, and the echo uh, completely uh, left us. So, just giving you a heads up, whatever you did. How about now? Yes. Uh, hello. Yeah. Oh, you going, know what it man. was? I was trying to follow on, on Facebook, see any comments. So oh, okay. So, <laughs> so that was the background. All right. So let, I'm let's see. I'm trying to see if we're going to watch party going on. Okay. Yeah. No, excellent, man. And and again, uh, I got your text about uh, making Instagram shareable. I'll definitely uh, uh, make sure we, I do that. I, last time I spoke to you, you were talking about Facebook and I kind of uh, zigged when I should have zagged. I never uh, looked at uh, Instagram. All right. So we have somebody here asking us, uh, can you mix raw with a dry dog food? Danny, can you answer that, man? Of course you can. Okay. When do you normally do it? I usually it? do it like as, as a treat. When? I mean, okay. when you want to change it up, when you think the dog is getting tired of eating the same dry food, you want to just change it up for them you know, get their appetite back up, you know, okay. or just go straight to raw and then switch back to to dry with raw and then wean out the raw and just go straight to dry. Okay, so good point. Uh, definitely if you're trying to wean or you're trying to make it more exciting for your dog, it's a good idea to go ahead and mix them up a little bit. Now, I see somebody here that's hitting our topic for the day, which is pasterns, and is saying growth plates also very important. And this is absolutely right. That's why you want to wait until 16 months until those growth plates are sealed. If you can wait a little longer, that'd be even better uh, before you start adding some real weight on your pup. I see another comment out here by Sam Quigley. Bad nail care can also have a negative effect on pastors. Have you guys noticed that, that when your dogs have long nails, they have a ten tendency to want to step back on the pad and it actually yep. leads to pastern issues? Yeah, one thousand percent. I've noticed that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you I mean, you, I just... don't, you don't really pay attention to it until it happens. Mm hmm. Because you think when you Correct. when you're working your dog, you think you know the nails are getting filed as they're working and stuff like that. And sometimes it's not it's not like that. And then all of a sudden, we see your dog acting a certain way. You know, that's when you're like, oh snap! You start noticing his nails. And the way they walk in, that's, that's that's absolutely right. So if you if you have a dog, if you happen to have a bully or a dog in general, and their phalanges or their fingers are long, and you see long nails coming out, or they or their nails grow grow a little bit faster, if you want to fix the pastern, you definitely need to take care of that nail care. Otherwise, you're going to be having issues, and you're never going to understand why you can't fix it. So uh, I got Ray Garcia saying, what kind of chicken pieces do you feed for the most bone content? Uh, Jordan, what, what, what kind of uh, chicken pieces do you feed on purpose in order um, to be able to? Yeah. Yeah. So for a while when I was doing uh, braised chicken, um, it would just be a whole like chicken leg quarters. And I would braise them a bit. You can't overcook them because that's when the bones get dry and they start to splinter. And you definitely don't want that. Uh, but you can kind of just braise the outside if you like. You don't even have to do that. You can just give it to them raw. Sometimes they braise if they're if you're introducing them to raw. Because some dogs, believe it or not, aren't naturally enticed by raw chicken. Um, so sometimes braising it can give it that little, um, you know, that little flavor, that little Maillard effect kicks in. And they, you know, it kind of right. entices them to eat it more. But I would go okay, with the so, leg quarter. Okay, so you basically sizzle it a little bit just to just yes. to give give a little taste to it. Okay, that that's a nice little twist. How about you, Danny? I honestly just give it to them raw. I usually just do the drumsticks. They seem to like it better. Okay. 
some like sometimes those quarter thighs come with too much skin. I have to take off the skin. Yeah. I don't like too much. They don't like the skin. I have two of them that like the skin, then the okay. other two don't like the skin. So I'm like, you know what? I just give them the drumstick. They like the drumsticks much better. Drumsticks. So you already know for bone support, just give it to them raw, fam. I tell you, I give them chicken quarters. Um, I, I might try that quick sizzle just to give it, spice it up for them a little bit. But I just give them yeah. chicken quarters. You have the protein there. You have the calcium, phosphorus. You also have cartilage there. And that's one of the main things that, that your dog's going to need, especially when it's growing and the bones haven't sealed yet. Uh, let's see what we got out here. We got Mr. Jonathan Rig. What's going on, Raul? What's going on, Jonathan? Let's see our next question. I don't usually – this comes from Justice Montgomery. I don't usually add weight onto a year to let all the joints and bones to fully develop completely. Uh, I, I think I've hit on it. Wait a year and a half. How about you guys? When do you guys really start adding weight on your pups, man? Either one. You can go first, Danny. Um, honestly, I let the puppies do their thing until they they fully grown. I, until until I think they can handle the weight. You know, some people overfeed their puppies, and you know, it's putting too much weight and strain on their on their joints and stuff like that. I just wait until I think that they, you know, they, they develop properly, and I think they're ready okay. to put in some work to to hold up the weight that they that they obtain it. So you know what age is that? What age is that? Two years, two and a half usually. I mean I know it varies per dog, but maybe anywhere from a year and a half to two years. Yeah. Okay. You know? Year and a half, two years. Okay. How about you, uh George? my female right now is nine months I got a nine month old female. You okay. Know? Don't the the most I you know I don't I don't feed her that that crazy. Like some people they all oh, do satin balls, do this, do that. I just give her her plate, you know, in the middle of the day, nice, healthy plate. And, you know, she's good. She's lean, 98 pounds. Ten, um, she's going to be 10 months old next week. So, you know, we're good. I just, I'm not, I don't follow the hype with the with the weight stuff. You know, I just want to make sure she looks healthy. And it's not yeah. too much for her that she might hurt herself when she's running in the yard or she's trying to jump on a spring pole or, you know, chasing a ball, stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Excellent. That's an excellent point, man. Uh you know, also when you when you have your pups heavier than what they need to be, uh, the risk for injury skyrockets, man. Uh, we got yeah, an, yeah. another gentleman here, Mr. Mark Trevino, saying, "Danny, other other than genetics, overfeeding and working dogs too hard, what causes joint issues and bullies?" Wow, that's a good question. Other than genetics and overfeeding I mean, and working dogs, what what else could cause? I mean, I mean just I think, their parents being a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> that's them coming from bad that's reading. <laughs> that's that's the only other thing that's really gonna cause. I mean, you you answer your question right there. I mean, not not trying to be rude, but that's mainly you know if you overfeed them, it's too you know. And I, I know a lot of people who who try to they follow the hype. They want their six month old puppy to weigh 120 pounds because then that that classifies them as an XL. You know, right? And in reality, you're doing a lot of harm to your puppy. Um, other than genetics, you can't. Sometimes you can't fix genetics. You know, it is what it is. It's just, you know, you, you, you the best it's thing safe. you can do is try to maintain it from, I mean, prevent it from getting worse, you know? Okay. And stuff like that. But, you know, that's all you can do. You, can, you can't, you know, something that's genetic, you can't really say, oh, yeah, you know, this is genetic. Let me take that out. She's going to be good tomorrow. It just don't <laughs> happen that way. Well, I'm going to add a little tidbit. Because I think I know where he's trying to go with this. I may be wrong. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you got your dogs on a flat surface like I do, which is cement, uh, dogs weren't meant to be walking on cement all the time, fam. They, you know, they're, 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 they're to be walking on uneven ground and whatnot. And, yeah, what you're probably going to do if you have your dogs on cement for too long and you don't let them out to run or anything, they're probably going to get splayed feet. If you let them nails grow, you're going to start having some serious pastern issues. So cement would be my guess or my crack at that particular question. Real quick, I want to send a special shout out to Jamie Christians uh, joining us from South Africa, man. Shout out to South Africa. Um, it's it's uh, Right now, South Africa is number four on the list of the nations that follow us. So special shout out, man. Uh, we have another question out here. We got uh, Jamie Humphrey. At what age do you start your gorilla milk and how often? Ah, good question. I see somebody's paying attention. For those of you that don't know, don't know I, I create a recipe. It's called gorilla milk. You can find it on my channel.
it's one of the videos we and I early at around three ish, three month ish, and uh, pretty much you, you can feed it to them at all times. Eat, whether you're feeding kibble or whether you're feeding raw, you can feed it. One little change on that particular diet: if you can get sodium-free mayonnaise, it's going to be a lot better than mayonnaise that does carry sodium. Uh, but all in all, that particular recipe, you buy your own ingredients, you make it yourself, and it's it's just. It just gives your dog, you know, all the added, um, you know, vitamins and, and things that you need for it to grow uh, healthy. And that's what I feed my dogs here in my yard. So uh, do you guys do any type of supplements whatsoever? And if you do, at what age do you start it? Um, I know me personally, I use the goat milk in its powder form. Um, okay. On, on pup. I mean, as early as when they turn about four weeks old, four and a half weeks old, and we're starting that weaning process, um, I don't think of it really as a supplement at that age. It's just more so a milk replacement. Um, but then as they get older, I will still sprinkle in on their food as a powder form. Now, if I see that a pup's looking like it's getting too big, it's getting adding weight too fast, and you know, you can right. just take that away. If I see some pups that I think may need a little bit more nutrition, uh, being that they were a preemie that was saved, or something like that, you know, I use the dime. I know some people use the the Bully Max or Liquid Gold. I know you got your Gorilla Milk. I use the Dine uh, supplement. And um, right, you can really just kind of play it by ear, honestly. All right. How about you, Danny? What do you do, man? Well, um, I usually use that Ultra 24 Gold Milk, replacement milk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. From the moment they're like about three and a half weeks old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, okay. so they get sick of it, to be honest with you. Um, I, I usually right. don't give them plain water when they're puppies, when they just freshly, you know, pups, maybe until maybe after, I would say, nine weeks. I always keep it in the milk, you know. And then after a while, when I see them ready to go home, I tell them, you know, I, I usually suggest the, the new owners that they could do that just to give them a little extra um, nutrition that they might need that they're not getting from the mom, you know. And stuff. That's when they want to pick them up before ten weeks old. Usually, I don't let the puppies leave before ten weeks old, and that's about it. You know, that's a good deal. Now, real quick, let me just say this, man: if you haven't picked up one of these see-through QVNK masks, you don't know what you're missing. All you got to do, fam, is look at the bottom of this video, and you could be able to click on any type of QVNK merchandise, whether is is uh, pretty much one of these masks or one of these that you put around your neck. Well, I had it flipped upside down. Uh, you could pretty much just order from there. So I want to make sure I make you guys aware. And like Danny says, he pretty much is starting to break up a little bit, Raul. You're breaking up. Let me know if I'm. Right now, you're like this. Okay. Combination <laughs> <laughs> is improving. Oh. Lost them again. Yep. Let's see if you can get back in. Hope so. It's on show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Fam, all right, fam. I apologize. Today is a tester. The connections at this time to see if they're getting any better. 
Um, I hope that I'm coming through. You're able to hear my sound. So let me do a quick sound mic check. Let me know if you're able to hear us. If you're able to hear me in particular. Can you hear me, Danny? Yes, sir. All right. All right. I apologize, man. I got a little I got a little choppy there for a second. Uh, let's see here. Um, OK, so now that we're talking about pastors, uh, ha have any of you experienced teething to cause pastern to drop? Do you guys have you guys noticed anything with teething and, and the pastorns to drop? I think they're just associating that 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 time frame with age. Um, but no, not in not in particular. I haven't heard of anything like that. I, I think what they're saying though is like around the time when a pup's teething, their pastorns starting to drop, which would be the time you know people trying to fatten their pup up too quick um, may lead to that. Like like we all were just saying earlier. Okay, so yeah, no, I haven't had that scenario. How about you, Danny? Have you have you noticed that when they're teething, their pastures drop? No, when they're when they're young, I really don't. I mean, other than when they when they're a few weeks old, you want to check out their their teething, you know, if they have an overbite, underbite, and stuff like that. But I wouldn't associate it with the pastures. That's for sure. Okay, no, definitely, <laughs> I, I I have to agree with you. I haven't I haven't. At least it hasn't been my experience. Uh, let me see what other questions we got out here, man. Uh, Martin Hernandez says, what effect would weights or weighted vests or so on affect on the dog's pasterns and growth plates? And at what age do you recommend when not to throw on weights? I think we kind of touched on this earlier, but let's let's be specific to this question. Gentlemen, either one of you. Go ahead, Joy. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just like we hit on earlier. You don't want to put too much weight on your dog too fast. Um, so 18 months and up or, you know, right. We'll say 16 months, somewhere within that time frame. It's, you know, you, your dog's going to get ripped. It's going to, it's going to project all its muscles and whatnot. You just got to give them time. Don't, don't rush it. Like I said, on my the previous uh, live I was on with Raul, uh, you can't get, get Caught up, like uh, Danny said, trying to get a 120-pound six-month-old. The dog is going to be mainly what it's going to be. It's up to you to maximize it. Um, but, yeah, just just wait till your dog's roughly 16, 18 months old. Then, try, then start to, um, you know, try to bring out his best defining traits. Yeah, how, I would, how about I, you, I, Danny? I didn't put a vest on. Yeah. I didn't put a vest on He-Man until maybe he was two years old, to be honest with you. You know, okay. And that's yep. when I knew he was able to. You know, I, I had a feeling he was halfway on popping to his best, you know, ability, and he was able to handle it. You know. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna say this too, uh, because I have used weighted vests, and I actually have a workout video with them. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say this as well. When you put a weighted vest on your dog, it does not only affect their pasterns; it's also gonna affect their knees. Okay. Because, you know, it, 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 the knee is, is, is the, the area with the most tendons. So it's telling you that that pretty much has the most pressure and accessory muscles in the back, in the rear. So you also got to be careful uh, with them back legs. If you have a dog that has back leg issues, putting a, a vest on them may not be the, the, the best thing. Uh, let's see. We have Ivan Uzi, QBN doing it proper. Man, I appreciate it, man. Uh, saying uh, we're bringing it correct. I appreciate it. Uh, let me see see what else we got. Uh, all right. So Sam Quigley sa is asking, uh, can you talk about a bit about diet with regards to pasterns? I have heard that too much protein can cause a negative effect. I have to agree with that totally. Let me give uh, Danny a chance. You want to jump on that one, Danny? Yeah, definitely. The pro too much protein. Like I said, people try to get their dogs they see the parents they want the puppy to be like the parents as soon as they get the puppy you know that's a mistake that we're doing you know what i mean like back in the days um i think in the early 90s late 80s when we had okanuba people was feeding okanuba to the puppies making them overgrow and you know it'll mess up their growth and mess up the dog so what you need to do is just careful with the diet you know what your dog can handle you know if you think 
your dog being 120 pounds at six months is healthy, then you know you're just hurting the dog and you're just messing up your program, and you and you know you're gonna injure your dog, you know. But you gotta keep him on a nice diet, you know. At, as a puppy, you should minimize him on exercising. He shouldn't be exercising. He should just be a puppy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just keep yep. it keep it simple. You know, he's chasing the other dogs around. You throw a ball, he'll you know he'll go catch it. You know. And stuff like that. And, and when they're puppies, I'm basically just teaching them how to sit, stay, you know, small things so they could just get it, you know, accumulated with everything around that's going on with the other dogs and stuff like that. But I'm not making them do no crazy exercise, no spring pole, anything like that, putting weight on them, none, none of that stuff until I, f I feel they're ready. Like I said, anywhere from a year and a half to two years old. <clears throat> All right. Let me jump in here real quick and let me just say because – the reason I kind of switched up the time, like I said earlier, so I could get a better internet connection. Also, so I could connect with those of you that are getting off of work, if you're driving home. So I want you guys, if you're able to, if you're driving home and you're listening to us, you're listening to the podcast, I want you to go ahead and just drop me a line, drop me a comment, let us know. Let us know that that this is something, uh, a good time for you to be able to listen and, and also for us to be able to answer questions for you to pick up as far as the American bully. Jordan, how about you, man? Can you talk about a bit about diet with regards to pasterns? I have heard that too much protein can have a negative effect. What do you, what do you think about that, man? How's that worked out with you? Uh, yeah, I hit on it a bit uh, a few minutes ago when we were talking about it. Uh, it, it all attributes to adding weight too fast. It, it's just it's just not good in any any sense of the word unless you're just trying to wow people. But then you're really going to hurt the dog in the long run. Um, you just want to keep the pup just looking healthy as possible until he comes of age. I've actually gone through that right now with the customer. Uh, he has a pup off of us and the vet said he's a well-structured dog. He's growing fast right now. He's in a growth spurt. He's about six, seven months old. And uh, they said... Um, he, we just need to slow down. Just let them rest. Don't let them exercise too much. Little stuff, too. Like I tell people, if you drive an SUV or pickup truck, don't be letting your six, yeah. seven month, eight month old puppy jump off the back of that. No, um, I know they can. And it seems like they're fine. But over time, that can just ruin their their, their pastures, their joints, their knees. Um, it's little stuff like that you don't really think about. Even jumping off the couch. It, it, I hate to say it, but good point, Jordan. If, 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 if your pups like Good to point. jump off the couch, not step down, it's a difference. Um, you got to watch all of that. And um, the pup's doing fine, though. You know, I recommend it switching them to some uh, large breed formula food. It really helps out with that a lot as well. And, uh, you know, I told him if he was feeding any extra supplements, just kind of cut back on that and just kind of let him let him rest. He's going to be 100, 100 plus pounds. Like, it's just in his blood. Um, so I just told him to just just be patient. Yeah, people got to stop using so many supplements on puppies because they want yeah. them to look like the parents, like as soon as they get them. Like, listen, let it, you know, <laughs> just ease up. It'll, he'll, you know, time will tell how he'll turn out. But during that period of time, you it's up to you if you could hurt him or better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, at the end of the day, I if you don't take your suggestion and if you don't take how you're doing, how you were doing it when you had him before you got rid of him, you know, to the, to the new forever home. Yeah. And they could hurt the puppy in the future. Uh-oh, we lost him again. Let's give him a few seconds here. See if he comes back in. Bro, if we don't come back, I'm taking over your show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you may as well go ahead and lead it and pilot it till he comes back in. That way we don't leave the viewers just hanging. Yeah, no, but I mean, you know, a lot of people's mistake is they, they see the parents and they want their puppy. Oh, my God, my puppy. You know, I had somebody do that um, with one of my puppies. He wanted the same thing that He-Man was doing. He was trying to do it. Like, Listen, you got to play it. You know, take it easy. You know, he's only four months old, five months old. You can't have him jumping on a spring pole or stuff like that. Let him, you know, let him just be yeah. a puppy, you know. And he got hurt at nine months old. His, he, he messed up his ACL. Ugh. Yeah, and then they were like, oh, well, you sold me a dog. I'm like, uh-uh. I seen what you've been doing. I've been following you on Facebook. Yeah. I seen that you're trying to make him jump on spring poles and stuff like that. He's still a puppy. That's what yeah. you're not getting. You know? No, I've got a, you got a very good exactly. point. Let me bring up another question here on Paul Spack. It says, on a nine-month 
uh, XL Bully. What do you guys consider overweight and how would you go, how you guys go about the pup losing some pounds? So that's a good question. How do you recognize a puppy as being overweight? Well, you know what? It's funny that they that you put that up because I went to the vet today to get one of my dog's shots and everything. Okay. She's almost 10 months old and she's 98 pounds. But it's okay. not because her but it's not because she's I overfeed her. It's just she's girthy. She's you know, big so like the that. Okay. When you notice the girth and we're trying to overfeed your dog. You know, a lot of people try to, you know, try to feed their puppies satin balls and then all the fat built up in the chest. So when they're standing up, all you see yep. is this, all this wiggle and stuff like that. You know, yeah. um, I don't do none of that. That's stuff. a good you know, point. I keep them, you know, they're not, they are on high pro um, Victor and that's all I feed them, you know? So high pro Victor. Just, okay. Yeah. So he's just yeah. due to the genetics. His father's about 130 pounds. His mother's 125 pounds. So she's a pretty big girl. So okay. that's why I don't feed her so much twice or three times a day. I just feed her one nice meal a day, and that's about it. And she's running around in the yard with the other dogs, you know, chasing a ball or running around after other dogs. So she gets her exercise on a daily basis, but nothing extreme like he does. So today the vet told me, like, you know, she's 98. I would like to see her at, like, 85. So I told the vet, I'm like, I guess you haven't seen her. I guess you haven't seen the parents because she already saw him. And I'm like, that's him brother. And she goes, oh, okay, now I understand. But she's not, you know, if you see her body structure, she's not, you know, her, her legs and then her stomach and then her shoulders, you know? It's just yeah. she's nicely proportioned, and she's not fat at all. Well, that's a good point, man. Uh, I could tell you if, if your dog is walking and you're not able to see at least a shape of – the ribs overall. I'm not talking about seeing the ribs, each particular one. I'm talking about just the overall shape of the ribs. Normally, that's a good sign that you're dealing with a puppy that's that's a little too overweight, man. Uh, I hope that that kind of sheds just a little bit of light on that. Uh, also, I'm going to go ahead and question for y'all if I can. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Absolutely. And um, I, which I think a lot of bully breeders and just the bully community, I don't think they I think they need to hear the answer to this. Should bullies have tuck? My answer is yes. Mine too. I don't think a lot of people believe bullies should have tuck. They just want to be as fat as possible. Just, oh my God, look at him, man. He's flat yeah. back, flat sides. Everything's even. You're just a big square, a big rectangle. Right. I'm just like, no, your, your bully should have tuck. If, you, if the dog doesn't have tuck, it's probably overweight. Actually, there's no probably to it. I, I totally have to agree with you on that. Yes, I feel that that bullies need to have tuck. Danny, uh, you have a lot of experience of the show ring and whatnot. What what do you think about bullies having tucks going into the show ring? Well, um, I heard about that about two years ago. Well, one of my one of the standards that was showing. That's exactly what they told the the show ring um, the handler. You know, it's not proportioned properly, and they didn't have a tuck. And mm -hmm. she was just like, she didn't really understand it because she lost to a dog that had slight high rear. So then you're like, okay, tuck, high rear, you know, where do you go about? So it's two things that you just going back and forth with and trying to understand um, how do you fix it or how do you go about it? You know what I mean? So, but yeah, you're absolutely right. All right. So definitely. So we, we're in agreement. You sh your bully should have a tuck. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to grab a three month bully and you're going to, you know, all of a sudden want to starve it to death so it could have tuck, fam. No, Danny no, no. said it. Jordan said it. Let the pup be a pup. Let the pup be a pup, man. You know what I'm saying? And then when it's time for you to go ahead and push that through, you go ahead and push it through. Let me see uh, what else what else we got out here, man. Uh, we got Seeker One saying uh, thank you guys for all the vital information. I appreciate it. Uh, we just had recently uh, people from Australia telling us they're catching us. How's it going with your internet provider, Horizon? <laughs> yeah, man, exactly, bro. Exactly. Uh, we, I think I there's more what... people trying to help you with your internet. Man, <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out, fam. Uh, we got I can't pronounce the name because I can't read that, but you are from Re Greece. Appreciate the knowledge you all share. Hello from Greece, 
Thessaloniki. Wow. Shout out to Greece. Thessaloniki. All right, man. I appreciate it. Uh, we're loud and clear in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Here you go. It's a nice little question. How much should my two-month-old XL bully weigh right now? He weighs 20 pounds. Is that too much or is that fine? Let me jump on this real quick because I keep getting asked this. Fam, I can't give you an exact number because each bloodline is going to grow a little differently. Also, do you have an Excel or do you have a standard? 20 pounds for an Excel is at three months, for example, it's not going to be much. Whereas a standard or, or even a pocket, you know, at three months, at 20 pounds, it may be. So you just got to play it by ear. If, if, you know, if the puppy is a little chubby at two months, that's not the end of the world. If your puppy's looking a little chubby at six months, you got a problem. So you're just going to have to play it like that. Do you guys want to add anything to this? I mean, you you, you want to go, Danny? No, go ahead. Uh, you're pretty much spot on, right? Well, you just let your pup be a pup. Um, you can't really know how much it's going to weigh. Like he said, Raul, Raul said, different bloodlines. There are XL bullies that are, you know, within the breed standard, you know, of what is it, for males, 19 to 21 and a half inches, or 19 to 20, 20 to 22 inches, I believe, and females is 19 to 21. Um, and there's double XLs, which I know is an official technical term yet, but it's a thing. Uh, for those, let's not get into that there. right now. Let's not get into that right now, George. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, if your dog comes from a taller bloodline, it may carry its weight different. If your dog comes from a shorter XL bloodline, you know, it's just it. Just let the pup be a pup. You know what a healthy puppy should look like. I hope. Hey, you Jordan, do. Jordan, you got somebody writing to you and asking you, uh, Trini boy. He's writing, Jordan. Do you have a website or a Facebook? Uh, yes, it's Moden's Bully Empire. For everything, uh, Facebook will be Jordan Moden, but it'll be in quotations uh, Moden's Bully Empire. But Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Moden's Bully Empire. Let me see your Free. shirt, man. Show them your shirt. Show them, them, show them something them. that shows your logo, That's man. There. The Moden's Bully Empire. Sorry, I got it crooked. Oh, there we are. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> yeah, no, I got this. Yeah, no, I got this folded. This folding phone is kind of throwing me off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey fam, uh, I, I will say uh, today I visited Jordan's yard, man, and I got I have some amazing footage, but unfortunately because of my internet is not uploading. So Jordan, I just want you to know, man, I'm gonna have to bring you up on the next live, and we'll definitely play it there. I got to give it a week to upload because Horizon over here Dang. is just not working right. No worries, man. No worries. All right, so let's see here. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, plethora byzenta. Will letting your pup chew on nyla bones mess with their teeth? What would, what would a good dog toy be for pups? That's a good question, man. What, what would be a good uh, dog toy? What, what do you give your dogs, Danny? I want to know. I try to get the toughest stuff out there, bro. Because they be wrecking toys. You know, I go out there to either PetSmart, Petco. Chewy.com, I try to get the indestructible stuff. Uh -huh. Them things it aren't indestructible is. as they say it is. I think they're forgetting that the bullies, you know, yeah. when they yeah. start focusing on something, they, 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 they yeah. want to just destroy it. You know what I mean? They, when they're, they're just wrecking stuff, you know. The, a ball, I bought a ball that weighed like five pounds the other day. I kid you not. It says indestructible. Within five minutes, it was already done. I was like, there goes my yeah. twenty nine ninety nine. You know, <laughs> so it all depends, though. You know, if they're a puppy, you don't want them getting too crazy. When they're a puppy, yeah. you can get those little bones with the little spikes. Right. So they don't try yeah. to chew it too much. They, they just nibble on it, and it works their gums and stuff. Um, for He-Man, I get the heavy-duty stuff. You know, make sure it lasts long, which is probably no more than a week. But at least, you know, he gets entertained and stuff like that. He exercises his jaw and, you know, similar stuff like that. That goes for... All my excels. My standard, he don't like toys. He just he's like a grumpy old man. And then my <laughs> Frenchie loves the balls. So you know, I get other little the little tennis balls that squeak. How about you, Jordan? What you got, man? What what can um, you add to this? Most of the time for me, it's just a good old rope. I have a spring pole hanging down that the pups have access to, <clears throat> but um it's it's low enough to where they don't have to jump up. They can actually walk around and just hold it. Like I said, you don't want them putting all their weight on their teeth and body at that age. It'll it'll destroy their teeth at that age. They'll just rip them out. And, uh, you know, so they do have access to a spring pole. 
but it's it's basically just a rope tied to a tree in a sense. They can just kind of walk around, pull on it, tug it. It's not heavy resistance. It's not a it's not a bunch of tension on the spring. Um, just kind of something they can have access to. A lot of times I do the uh, okay. the pig ears as well because they start off hard, but as soon as they start getting some moisture on them, they kind of break down. And the pups really right. like that because the teeth can sink into it. And um, I think it gives them like a good happy medium of like not too hard, not too soft. You know, uh, I'm, you just brought something up uh, that I want to throw out there as well. By the way, uh, the one toy that, that I do give my dogs that has actually been able to stand a little bit of the test of time is, is the Kongs. And what I do is I put a little peanut butter in there and give it to them. And, you know, they have at it for a while. Um, but Jordan was just saying something, and that is – uh, and, and this goes in general for any toy. If you set it up on the spring pole and you have a pup, go ahead and jump on it. I'm going to tell you something here real quick. If you have a puppy that's showing a slight overbite at three months, that's not the end of the world because their jaws, their jaw bones and jaw muscles are really not going to really kick in until they're anywhere between eight months to a year. But really important, if you're noticing that, you don't want to go ahead and put a, a, a toy that's too high on the spring pole for that puppy to be hanging on. Because if they start hanging on it, they may develop muscles either on their upper jaw or lower jaw that then is going to affect the development of that, of that slight underbite with time. If you have a very slight overbite, that's, that's almost like, like seeing a cowhawk or a slight cowhawk on a two-month-old puppy. With time, it's going to go away. You just got to give it time to develop, and you got to see the improvement. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Let's see what else we got out here. Uh, somebody saying, uh, Justice Montgomery saying, uh, so extremely easy for a dog to tear an ACL. This is true, man, and I just had to learn this the hard way recently. Uh, as you guys know, uh, February 14th, I believe, Valentine's Day. It was either the day before or the day of. It snowed down here in Texas, uh, particularly southeast Texas, where, I, where I'm at. And uh, my boy Power, uh, you know, the, 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 it, it had snowed. Then the sun kind of came out and melted a little bit. And then it got nighttime again. It got real cold. So then it became, I guess, sleet or ice. And so the next morning when I go out there to feed my boy Power, he decides to jump up on his two legs, and when he comes down, I could just – me and him, we made eye contact, and I could just tell, you know, he, he tweaked it the wrong way. Next thing you know, I had a dog, you know, pretty much hopping around, you know. Uh, so it, it is so true, man. Them, them, them ACLs and them back legs, just very easy for them to tear up, whether it's that particular accent that I had or if you're using a weighted vest – be very careful. Do, have you guys ever experienced uh, any type of ACL issues, uh, either Danny or Jordan? Um, honestly, no. I'll be honest with you. I try not to. I think sometimes that, ha I mean, it could happen just, you know, accidentally, like, like it happened with you. But sometimes I think most of that stuff happens when people try to take the exercise to a different level that they, their dog never, you know, never really – experience so you try to push them to do something yeah. they haven't done and then all of a sudden you know they get hurt you know you gotta just stick to what you know you gotta stick to the basics you know if your dog can't jump five feet in the air don't make him jump five feet make him let him jump two feet what he knows that's just you know just that's just common sense you know what i'm saying so, yeah don't over you know, don't overstretch the limits yeah, you know, absolutely some people, you know what it is some people you know their dog jumps two feet up on a spring pole then they go on the internet, they see somebody else's dog jump four feet or five <laughs> feet, not knowing yeah. the extent of the exercise that the, the owner has been doing with the dog, so the dog is used to it. You know, right. so all of a sudden, you know, oh, well, I'm going to do the same thing. All of a sudden, there goes your dog, you know, freaking $5,000 surgery because the That's ACL, it. you know, you just messed up his ACL, you know. That's it. That's a good point. That's a good point. If the advice has not uh, scared you away from pushing that hard, then the price tag should uh, that's what uh, ACL, right, Danny? It, it runs you anywhere between five to seven grand. I've seen. Yeah, now it depends how bad it is. You know, it could really, you know, it yeah. could really mess you up, set back your program real bad, <laughs> real quick. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Jordan? Uh, fortunately, uh, for fortunately, we have not. Uh, I'm grateful for that. 
And uh, I do have one one male that's like extremely athletic. Like I could probably put him in some performance shows. He can he can jump about seven eight feet up in a tree. Uh, he just turned a year, so I don't like doing it too much because like we just spoke about the pastures, just just too much weight, that momentum coming down. But he's really like a freak of nature. I, I, it's it's kind of tough to stop him from jumping. Um, and but he does have really strong pastures. Raul seen him. He has very cat like feet. Um, but yeah, yeah. fortunately, that's, that's uh, your boy that TK, happened. right? Yeah, that's, that's uh, your boy TK, TK. Tiger King. That's TK, TK, for. my bad. But yeah. you see, hey. that that's when you know what you could do with your dog. Yeah, because you know his ability, so mm -hmm. you could take him to the extent that you think he could go. But if he wasn't yeah. like that, you had no idea that your dog had the ability, and you push him to do something else. That's the easiest way for him to get hurt, and then you know yeah. you're black, you're back to square, you know, to square eight. Yep. You're absolutely right. Now, let me bring up this, this statement that's written in by Mr. Will E. Martin. He says, thank you, fellas. Your information has been priceless, <laughs> though my wife is about to kick me out if I watch any more of Raul's videos. <laughs> Man. Danny, you got any advice for this gentleman? If you're in the bully game, then you need to follow people who really, you know, really have passion for what they're doing. Raul, you know, that's how I met you. I followed your videos on YouTube. You're very informative. I have a lot of respect for you and your camp. You know, Appreciate and it, if you want to get into this bully game, you need to follow people who really actually, you know, have they're trying to do good business. Jordan, I've, I just met you. I think mm -hmm. you're, you're doing great. You're on the right path. You know, thank you, thank congratulations, you. man, you know. Yeah. And, you know, that's what you need to do. Well, if you're really going to get into this dog game, you have to try to be, you know, have mentors like these gentlemen that are alive with me right now, and you know, tell your wife that you know, you you know, you, you you'll get better as soon as you start getting a little bit more knowledge. But you know, that's right. You got you got to flex that muscle on your yeah. wife, man. But let me you cut it out. To. I'm on YouTube right now. Look, I'm gonna tell you what you do, bro. You grab your pillow, you fluff it up, you take it out to the sofa, and then you let her know. I'm going to keep watching Raul's uh, YouTube videos <laughs> and she's going to go ahead and kick you out. What, what, what you got to say, Jordan? What do you, what advice you got uh, for this gentleman? I would say like I did, um, try to incorporate her, uh, find one of Raul's videos or whomever, whomever's videos that you think she might like. Cause you should know that's your wife. And then, you know, slowly transition her into more about the, the structure and genetics and, you know, overall confirmation and whatnot of dogs. And, you know, you, she may be, in a, she may end up be hitting, waking you up one morning and like, babe, let's do it. Let's go pull the trigger. Let's go buy out. Let's go buy out right for his first pick on Aftermath. Oh, buy a Frenchie for her. <laughs> That's right. The Frenchie always right. does it. Yep. Yeah. That's right. They love Jordan. the Frenchie. Jordan, smooth operator over here. Get her to watch a video that you know <laughs> yeah. she might like. That's a good point, man. Let's see what else we got, bro. I got uh, my boy out here, eight six two, coming from real clear. Now. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you for letting us know. And let's see what this uh, gentleman is saying. Caesar Jimenez, don't follow the hype. Do what's best for the dog as an individual. Absolutely. What do you guys think, man? Yeah. What what what's I mean, what's some of the hype that you're seeing out there? that you're seeing a lot of sheep follow that they don't need to be following. Any one of you two, man. Let's elaborate um, on that. Color, weight, um, big name kennels. You know, everybody wants to join this game and just try to get a dog from a big name kennel. And then all of a sudden they think they're going to make that big, that big money when they haven't even really, you know, think about the struggle, the hard work that this big name kennel has has done for themselves has created that platform has created that avenue for them to be able to be that big name kennel you know and this then true. for the xl breeders your puppy weighing 120 pounds is not healthy you know that the, the heavier your dog is doesn't make it an mxl it just makes him a fat dog you know right Love plain it. and simple Love you know um you take this offensively i apologize but you know you can't be worried about the hype and hurt your dog and then at the same time you're hurting your program you know, plain and yep. simple. But if you're one of those that want to follow the hype, then I guess you're gonna to have to learn the hard way and see what exactly what we're talking about. You know, everything, you know, everything like they say, everything has a time. You know, there's a time for everything, let's say. 
you know, and your dog will get to where it needs to get to its highest potential if you do it right, if you do it correctly, you know. Not if you're trying to rush and be like, oh, well, that kennel, that big name kennel is doing this. I got to do this with my puppy. And then you're going to hurt your puppy. You're going to take him to the ER. It's going to cost you anywhere from $5,000 to $9,000 to get that operation. And obviously, since you're not that big name kennel, you don't got that money. So it's going to set you back. Forget about it. At least another year or two. Hey, let yep. me just make a quick announcement, a quick pause, uh, because I just posted a link for anybody that wanted to jo join our live. I have Mr. Nigel Green. Uh, I just want to let him know I see you, Nigel. Once you get your camera ready, we're going to bring you on. We're going to be talking. Uh, Danny just brought up a very good point, man. Weight does not make your dog an excel, okay? You could have a 150-pound puppy, 150-pound, nine-month-old dog does not mean he's an excel. What makes a pup or a dog an excel is when you're 20 to 23 inches at the withers. Remember, dogs are going to grow up first. Our, our bullies are going to grow up first, then they're going to grow wide, and then they're going to grow their head. They do it normally in this particular order. There's always an exception to the rule. But I just want to throw that out there because people have that misconception that, you know, the heavier the dog is, you know, the more of an XL it is. And, you know, nothing could be further from the truth. Is there anything else, Jordan, that you've seen that people are just following up the hype and they're just really killing themselves or shooting themselves in the foot? I mean, those are the main big three, like he said, weight, color, uh, big name kennels. Um, I can tell you something that's kind of messing up the game and leaving a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. I've seen some people now that are saying they won't buy a bully because there are too many scammers out there. Um, okay. Not to change the subject or anything, but it, no, it needs I, to be said. I'm glad you brought that up because, matter of fact, I have uh, – I mean, you kind of let the dog out the bag, so I'm going to go ahead and do it and, and say it out here anyways uh, for those of you that are watching. Uh, pretty much I, I'm thinking about making a video or maybe even a live uh, where I call uh, certain breeders. Now, I'm not going to put their accounts on Facebook or anything like that, but I'm going to show you – how it is that you become a sheep uh, for a predator, okay? Whenever you're going to be able, when, whenever you're going to go ahead and, and buy a bully, you should have already done your research. So by the time you get there, you know the questions you got to ask. If you're just super excited and, again, you're under the, the pretense that you're simply going to buy a puppy and you're going to breed it with something else and, bang, just because it's got a big name, you're going to make money, that's the very first mistake you're going to make and people are going to take advantage of that. So I'm glad you brought that up, um, Jordan, because I'm looking forward to doing that. Now, gentlemen, I have Mr. Nigel Green. Nigel, I'm about to bring you on. Let me just say this to everybody listening. Before I bring you on, there are no curse words. Also, uh, we're not bashing any other kennels or anything like that. Uh, so if I do happen to bring you on, just make sure that these are the rules that we're all going to abide by. Uh, as they are not my rules, they're more of YouTube rules. So, Mr. Nigel Green, uh, are you able to hear us, bud? What up, man? Hey, what's hey going man. On? What up? N nice to have you here, brother. Nice to bring you on. Uh, you're the first person on, on Bully Talk that we brought on live uh, that we just simply sent a link out there and you, you came on board. So, congrats to you on that. What hey. questions do you got, man? What do you want to talk about? Hey, I want to start off. I ain't scared, man. Like, I know on other shows, everybody was scared to hop on, man. I, I, I ain't scared at all. But uh, excuse the vest, man. I, I'm getting ready to jump on my motorcycle in a second. But I want to get on um, because what I wanted to kind of discuss was um, feeding. Um, I watch a lot of your videos. For one, salute to everything that you do, man. Salute to everything that all you guys do. Um, I appreciate it, man, because I'm one of those guys that is definitely trying to get on and learn and really learn the game and take off um, on my own. I'm out here in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, so – as far as feeding wise, um, my pup, because you you actually just briefly did a consultation for me, um, and I appreciate that. Oh, too. I did. Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah, so um, I got most of you know most of the knowledge as far as genetics and just the breakdown of how everything works. But my question is, uh, is like I said, more geared towards feeding. I've been watching a lot of your raw, um, your raw diet, and he's at my pup. Okay. On your, um, that you do for your um pups, but my thing is with his kibble now, so. I'm starting to understand kind of the balance of raw to kibble, but okay. uh, growing up off of just about most of the puppy food that I give them. I've had them on Taste of Wild. I've had them on Victor. Okay. 
Um, I've had him. Um, what was the other one that I did? I did. I tried um, the Purina. I've tried those, and it's like he he keeps he just keeps regurgitating those foods. But um, I go. It's a brand that tractor supply called Four Health. Um, that I right. use that I use for my adult dog, but it's adult food. But I, I gave it to him, and he held it down. He took it. You know, everything was fine, and you know it, it was it wasn't an issue. So I mean, what what do you guys feel? You know, on if you're if, if a pup, you know, is having those types of issues, but then you make dog food and you know, okay, it, it, okay, it so Nigel, it. so Nigel, we're we're gonna go ahead and answer your question, and I kind of remember now uh, that you brought up some points. Uh, actually, doing the consultation with you, thank you so much for coming on the live. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that link again for you guys to join us if you want to. All you got to do is click on the link, and we're gonna bring you on, Nigel. Thanks for coming, brother. I appreciate it. So real quick, uh, Nigel is basically feeding uh, different types of foods and the dog is is regurgitating or he's vomiting. Now, I think that's one of his first mistakes. He's changing his food too much, too, too often. Well, that, yeah. that definitely could be could be one of the yeah, that definitely could be a mistake. But also, uh, I, I will tell you, I did not have a good experience with Taste of the Wild. Uh, I, I basically tried transi transitioning my dogs into it, and it, it was just not a good combination. So you got to realize when you turn that bag and you look at the ingredients in the back, a lot of times you're going to have some ingredients or, that is just not even natural for, for a dog to be eating. I mean, I always go to the same content that I talk about, sugar cane, excuse me, sugar cane and, you know, uh, beet pulp. I mean, in the wild, when have you seen, a, you know, a coyote or a wolf or any one of these carnivores, you know, hey, you know, I feel like, you know, chewing on some sugar cane today. It doesn't work out that way. So what I could tell you is it could either be what Danny just said, where pretty much, you know, you're changing the foods too fast, too often. I'm sorry. But if you, if you see that you changed the food and you stuck to it for, say, about two weeks and you're still having issues – then it's possibly that there's an ingredient inside of that food that is affecting you. I've been noticing one thing, and this is going to be a word of advice for everybody. The less ingredients that a food has that you feel is not natural to a carnivore, the better off you're going to be, fam. The better off you're going to be. Um, yeah. You know, forget for a moment protein content. Now, I always try keeping my protein no higher than 24%. And I try to get as much as fat content as possible, around 20% if possible. But aside from that, if you're buying a bag of food and it's got a whole mess of ingredients or ingredients that you can't even pronounce correctly and it's affecting your dog, I mean, it, you know, it, it's time to go ahead and move to something else. Nigel, to your question, if 4Health is working for you, man, adult feed, uh, for health adult feed, food is working for you, there's nothing wrong in feeding it to them, man. Matter of fact, I found that when I feed, whenever I have any type of pasture issue or anything I see, I start feeding adult, uh, adult large breed food, and typically mm -hmm. I'm able to fix the problems at hand. So it, it wouldn't well, but, even be a, a bad idea. Go ahead, Danny. But also, though, but also, I mean, you could change any brand you want, but if it got the same type of ingredients, like some dogs react to chicken meal. So you could change, mm -hmm. you could go from Taste of the Wild, Blue Buffalo, Merrick, you know, Victor, and if they got chicken meal, your dog is going to react the same way because it has chicken meal, you know? So you really got to look into the ingredients that you're, that you're feeding your dog and pay attention to your dog. You changing your dog's diet frequently, like every week, it's going to mess up the dog's stomach no matter what, you know what I'm saying? So that's your first mistake. You have to stick to something, you know, like if you just, unless you win, the way you win a dog out is like, you, you know, you give them a little bit at a time, with the old food until you bring it all back, you know, 25%, 50%, then all the way to 100% of the food that you want to transition them to. Other than that, if you just cold turkey, change the dog's diet, your dog is going to react a certain way. It could be diarrhea for a week, or it could be like you, like, the, like the gentleman said, it could be regurgitating and, you know, vomiting and stuff like that. So you really got to take, you know, a, a, you really got to sit back and say, okay, let me just test this for a week or so. Let me see how he's doing on it. And, you know, but you have to wean them off first and then test it. You can't just, as you're testing him and wean him off and it happens, you're just going to change to a different food because now you, you just, you're not making anything better. You know, so you have to really pay attention to what is he allergic to? Chicken meal, 
you know, beef meal. What is it that, you know, that all those dogs, all those dog food have in common? You know, you might have to go to a hyperallergenic food, um, dry food, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you might even have to go to a medicated, like um, the Hills, wet food, you know? You have to, and before you do anything, you should go to a vet and say, hey, this is what's going on with my dog. What can I, you know, what can I do? You know, what do you suggest? You can't just be changing the dog's diet every week or every other week, thinking that you're going to fix the problem and just changing his diet. And then all of a sudden right. go to an adult food, and then the adult food is not going to have everything a puppy needs. So now you're going to be affecting it in another way. Yeah, also, no, real, go ahead, Jordan. Go ahead. Uh, just something else real quick. Sometimes it's as simple as, is your dog eating too fast? Is it, um, um, I have, like my boy Zeke, when he was a puppy, he was, he had motion, well, not motion sickness. I, I guess it's the same thing, uh, car sickness. If I would feed him and take him to the car on the ride to PetSmart, I'm going to turn around halfway there and it's going to be throw up in my back seat. But a lot of times it could just be your puppy trying to gobble its food down too fast. And, you know, you can fix that by either giving it to them in portions or they have special bowls you can buy that make them slow down their eating habits. Um, but that's just, you know, something else just to kind of keep an eye on. No, definitely. Uh, I, I, man, you know, this is why I like having uh, different uh, – this is why I like having, you know, this particular show. We get different points of views. Each one of us has brought a, a different angle. So, Nigel, I hope uh, that we've been able to answer your, your question one way or another. You could try one of our advices, and if not one, the other one will probably work, man. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best. Make sure you write to me and let me know how it works out. Uh, possibly I could bring you on maybe on a future uh, on a future podcast. Uh, let's see. I have right here Ms. Zola, the American bully. Zola, the American bully. Can you guys talk about the towel floors and how it can cowhawk and east westy your dog's feet? I touched on that earlier, and I was talking more about spay feet. Um, do you gen gentlemen want to want to talk about that? Elaborate on that a little bit. So you can go ahead and grab it, Danny. Uh, cow hawk is not really – the floor is just probably just genetic and somewhat. You know, it all depends how bad it is. You know what I mean? Um, okay. That That's one of the things I really pay attention. That's the first thing, I'll be honest with you, other than when I'm stacking a dog, a puppy, and I see his front, that's the second thing I look at is how, how, how bad is this cow hawk? You know what I mean? If it's real bad, you know, you're going to have to start working from – from puppy and trying to, you know, stack them, you know, trying to fix them, trying to do things that, that try to, um, you know, try to get it straight, you know, try to get it right at the best it can. But other than that, I don't think the floor, I mean, when they're puppies, you have to make sure that they, that they're able to walk on something that they could grip. You don't want them to slide or anything like that. Cause then you could create something called swimmers and, you know, we'll get that into Correct. another topic. But you, know, you really need to, you know, have blankets, not straight, flat like iron, but, you know, have more little wrinkled up so they could get a, get a grip, you know, so when they try to walk, you know, they're not slipping and, and stuff like that, you know. So, but on the cow hook part, you have made, you know, look at the parents, see what they're, what they're producing, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's not, it's not really have, I don't think it really has to do with the floor they're standing on, you know. Um, yeah, sometimes... If you're talking about a dog just stopping all of a sudden, and sometimes they just stop wherever their feet land, you know, some dogs might look easy westy, but they're not. It's just the way they, you know, you told them to stop or whatever they're trying to focus on, they just stop, you know, and freeze. And it might not be that. But if you see your dog all the time with the back legs like this, yeah, that's kind of, you know, you got to try to see the best you can. If you're producing that dog, then you got to try to find a way to, you know, Strength to have some, you know, you gotta try to find a way that you have a dog that has straight cow hogs, you know. That's the All right, best, let me, you know, let, me that's the best let me jump, let me jump on that. Uh, let me just elaborate on that just a little bit. Uh, and Danny hit a very good point if you have slippery uh floor. Okay, if you know you have tile floor, I know that the question was about tile, but if it's slippery, then you may cause a lot of issues for a puppy in particular because that the reason cow hawks happen fam uh i mean there's a variety of reasons it, it could be either the dog structure but 
I want to say the majority of the pups that are young, two, three months old, whenever they need to base themselves and distribute the weight, they're going to kick the feet out. It's almost natural, okay, at that age. If you continually have a puppy on a smooth surface that's slippery, you're only going to promulgate cowhawk not improving because the muscles that are being used are not the muscles – to correct, but yet the muscles to exacerbate what you already currently have. I just want to throw that in there. Um, and definitely east-west feet as well. If the dog is slipping and, and sliding, the reason that the dogs usually go east-west is because it's redistributing the front weight. Okay, so imagine uh, if you're on a slippery surface, immediately you're going to open your legs. And essentially, that's what yeah. the dog is doing when they go east-west. And it's, they're just trying to distribute the weight. Jordan, you want to elaborate on that before we jump to the next question? Uh, yeah, mainly genetics. Um, I think tile floor can affect it. Just not – I think it can affect it a little bit. Um, kind of in the right. sense how a raised feeder can help a little bit. If your dog come from eight generations of extreme east-west, raised feeder won't do anything. But if it's within like a slight margin, you, you have an opportunity to try to help help fix and correct that problem. Um, and it, you, you'll see it. It's just like us. If it's ice outside and you, you start to feel yourself slipping, you're immediately going to bend your knees and kick your feet out and try to lower your center of gravity. It's just only natural. Okay, well, that definitely, I, you know, like I agree with both of you fellas, and you know, I hope we've been able to answer your question. So, you know, <laughs> if your tile floor is slippery, you know, you might want to get some rug. Who knows? Uh, Seeker one, I'm not in the bully game. I watched Raul's videos because I was given an exotic bully with straight legs, but I love the dog, and I take bits and pieces from his videos. And my bully is the boss. Hey, man, that's that's good. I've been getting hit up uh, quite a bit lately by uh, exotic fans that are also QB&K or actually American Bully XL fans as well. And they're asking me to make more content on the exotics. And, and I promise you, I'm going to be making a, a I want to make at least one podcast on the exotics. I know Danny has maybe more knowledge on that or has worked around people that have exotics more than I. Uh, I'm kind of limited only because I deal with Excels. I've dealt with Excels from the start and classic. So I, I couldn't sit here and, 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 and tell you, you know, hey, yeah. this is what I do, you know, when, when in reality I haven't done it. I'm not afraid to say I don't know. Danny, you want to elaborate on that uh, as far as exotics? Well, I mean, I think exotic has been one of the most, the breed that has been batched the most, you know, and, um, and they, they've gotten better. You know, I'm nobody to, to really tell you that you're doing wrong or you're doing right. You know what I'm saying? It's your program. You you know, whatever you do is the direction it will take you. It'll either be successful or it'll crash. You know what I mean? Um, at the end of the day, as breeders, we want to try to create the healthiest dog as possible. You know what I'm saying? If you got an exotic that has straight legs, then you're going towards the clean exotic movement. What has been, you know, for a while, people, the exotics have been trying to create better, healthy dogs. So shout out to them. You know, they're not trying to create these, you know, unfunctional dogs that people have been bashing them for. So, Correct. like I said, I'm nobody to be bashing anybody. If that's what you like, you know, God bless you. Try to do the best you can for the breed that, you're, that you have in your yard. And just, you know, try to seek for mentors that are more knowledgeable in what you're breeding or what you're into than people that are out of your breed type. You know what I mean? Like us XL breeders can't really help too much in the exotics other than tell you that do the best you can on trying to, if you're gonna breed that dog, try to breed it to a dog that's functional, that's healthy, that will implement your dog, Correct. that will have, that has something to implement your program, you know, and that's about it. You know what I'm saying? Luke, what's going on, Luke? <laughs> yeah. That's you, my got people right talk. you got people talking, man. When is a dog considered fully grown, Jordan? Uh really kind of depends on the breed. Like Chihuahuas are our basically breed. Huh? our breed, American Bully oh, so, XL. American Bully, I, whew, that's kind of tough. I would I would say really honestly, 
in between somewhere in between three and four. It's not like the old stigma. Once the dog hits two, it's fully grown. I see these dogs no. developing a lot more after two, three, up to like four years old. I've seen dogs grow and mature, head head shape and size change, structure uh, starts to kind of fill out a little bit more. Uh, so I would say closer to four years old. Yep, I, I have to agree with you on that. I've seen head continuing to grow as far as 36 to 40 months. So, yeah, yeah, you're pretty much on point. How about you, Danny? What you got on that? Sorry, two to three. And I'm um, two and a half to three, three and a half is, is the proper age. They would actually say that your dog is mature. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anywhere from one to two and a half, they're still in that puppy stage, still in that little one of freaking play and all that stuff. His head yeah. hasn't popped properly, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Well, I would say anywhere from two to two and a half to four years old. And it can be dog by dog. I got a, my girl, Kona, she been acting super mature, mature since she was like 14 months old. I still wouldn't breed her at that age, of course. Uh, well, I didn't breed her at that age. But um, I have other dogs that are two years old and still act like big puppies. So you, you kind of got to play it ear by ear and, you know, just watch the blood too because – the XL double XL thing. I noticed the double XLs tend to grow to a high at, at a to yeah, an older. They're gonna age, go for more time, right? The yeah. bigger the dog, yeah. The bigger the dog, the uh, they they have a tendency to continue growing uh, way past uh, the the smaller dogs. Now we have a question here by Badman Bader. He says, "Are XL bullies and XL pit bulls the same thing?" Man, that's almost like. I could already see some pit bull owners, you know, getting a stomach ache from this question and some XL owners as well. Well, you know what? In reality, Go ahead. if your yeah. American bully is not registered as an American bully, then you're you're a pit bull. That's <laughs> <laughs> just plain simple. Well, for the for the UKC, uh, for those of you that don't know, the UKC was sorta of, kind of the first one to recognize us and correct me if I'm wrong, Danny or Jordan. And so what they did is they allowed us to uh, bring our dogs in, but they were initially registered as pit bulls. Okay. And then obviously the ABKC came in and then I think was, was it two or three years ago that the ABKC decided, you know, I mean, the UKC decided, you know what, we're going to classify them as bully, but you lose the purple ribbon uh, yeah. indicator and whatnot. It was, it was maybe three or four years ago. Five, about uh, five years ago. Five years ago. Okay, there you go. So it was yeah. five years ago. And so, so once you do a transfer uh, of breed from American from ABTP from American Pitbull Terrier to yeah. American Bully, you can't go back. No, yeah. It's so, a one time shot. And if yeah. they decide that your dog is not a bully, you're screwed because you can't go back to being a PBT. Yeah. But a lot of so people you, really don't want to change a lot of people don't want to really don't want to do the transfer of breed because at the end of the day is the business move. Yeah. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Correct. That's what people don't understand. You know, you have a lot of people who, when they do breedings, the papers still say APBT. And then if you were the ones that changed the transfer the right. breed type to American Bully, now you're forcing that dog or that female that you just bred to to try to transfer the breed. And if they decide not to, out of the topic, you have to wait six months to mm -hmm. single register that puppy Right. And then put the registration numbers of the father and the mother, and then you get a lineage. But on the dog that's an American bully, I believe they won't do any number registration numbers. They only follow the dog that's an American pit bull terrier. And some people, as a breeder, you don't want that discrepancy of people trying to think that you're jerking them. Oh, my dog is not going to have papers. Oh, oh shit, my dog, you know this and that. But it's just you have to tell people the truth from the get. If you bring that, that's what happened with my standard and my XL. When I first said, you know what, let me see what he man could throw. Let me throw him to my to my champagne standard. And you know, she threw beautiful puppies. And I told the AKC, my female's an American bully. My dog was still an American pit bull terrier. And she told me exactly what to do. Single register them at six months old, put their registration right. numbers on the parents, and they will send you the lineage, but it's, it's gonna be exactly how it is. It's not gonna be any different. You know what I'm saying? So unless you wanna follow. You're gonna have a fan base that really trusts you for you to for them to buy puppies from a dog that's registered as an American bully compared to an American Pitbull Terrier, you know, combined, and then just go with the flow. And then once you get that puppy and you register him, you have the opportunity right there to either register him as an American Pitbull or as an American bully. 
and then that's what the dog will follow. This is true. Uh, I can tell you. I can tell you when I originally bought my bulls for my yard, they were all every single. Give me one, one second. Sorry. As, as APB. Not a problem. They were all registered as APBT. Uh, I did a little bit differently uh, at the time and still now. Uh, the UKC gives you uh, a one time at the time, I think it was $30 uh, designation change from APBT uh, to American Bully. And now every single one of my dogs is registered as American Bully. You lose the purple ribbon. Eh. So what? At least for me, it, it, it's not a big deal. How about you, Moten? How do you have your dogs registered? Um, well, and some are uh, American Pit Bull Terrier still, and I'll tell you why at the end, and then some are American Bully. Um, before I even really found out that I could change them over, you were the one who actually told me that when I had to bring my take my girl Kona to Fireball. So we, uh, yes. we he, had to make uh, the switch. me on that, and I switched her over from American Pit Bull Terrier to American Bully. Also, if you're not comfortable with switching them over to American Pit Bull Terrier, uh, I mean to American Bully on UKC side, you can just dual register them on ABKC, and that way you can right. have one of both because the ABKC will take them even if the UKC papers say American Pit Bull Terrier, they'll do them as bullies. Uh, but for to better the breed, I think we all should eventually get all our dogs to American Bullies. That way you can stop having these backyard breeders say, yeah, hey, I sold this guy American Bully. I bought this American Bully from this guy who was selling him for 200 bucks. And I don't know why right. it doesn't have any mass, why it lacks breed type, why he's real snipey. It's because you bought a straight up American Pit Bull Terrier. Absolutely. Now, gentlemen, let me just say this. Uh, we have pretty much come to the end of the show, man. Danny, I want to thank you. Jordan, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, Daryl. We missed you, man. Uh, we need you back here uh, for our next show. Uh, and definitely, I want to thank you guys. Again, this was more of a tester. I wanted to see how the connection came through. I hope it's come out uh, a lot better. And hopefully, this time is suitable for the majority of the people that watch us on the East, Central, and West Coast. Uh, I want to tell you, this has been Raul from the Q. This has been Jordan. You could go ahead and sign off, man. Danny, you too. Uh, this is Jordan's Moden's Bully Empire. We up, Danny. Dan Danny, where you at, man? Hey, fam. I think he's still muted. <laughs> no, oh, he I said second to none bullies and rip double XL bullies, Mr. Second to none. Thank you, Raul, once again.